Welcome back, pet parents, for another episode of Pet Health Junkies. And this one is so exciting. So if you are new here, the title should be self-explanatory. We are junkies for pet health. And if you're new here, my name is Jessica. I am a canine nutritionist and holistic pet health coach. I have my two co-hosts with me today, Pam Roussel, who owns Perfectly Holistic, and that's P-U-R-R-R, like a purr, like a cat purr, because she specializes in energetics for cats. And Janet Cesarini, who owns an indie pet store here in Georgetown, Texas, called Pupology. So definitely check those out. We have some really, really fun guests for you today. We have Carissa and Carmina from Coco therapy. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here today. I just want to start out before we run into all of the questions. I want you ladies to kind of introduce yourself um, a little bit. And because I know this is a family business. And for me, that's important. Trust, transparency, small business. Um, if we can call it a woman owned, I, I don't know the logistics of it, but I also really love small women owned businesses. We can talk about all of that. I just wanted to start out by saying that I am such a fan of coconut oil and I use it like I li I have jars of cocoa therapy around my house because I use it for everything. I use it. Um, I don't use moisturizer or face cream or lotion. I use coconut oil all over my body when I get out of the shower every night. Um, I do it. I use it for um, oil pulling in my mouth. I use it on my dogs, on my cats. I'm putting some coconut oil in my dog's food tonight because she's having a little tummy constipation issue. <laughs> so um, it's one of my favorite, favorite things. I can't have enough of it. It's on my Christmas wish list every year, specifically cocoa therapy. So thank you guys so much for being here. I know Pam and Janet probably want to welcome you as well. <laughs> yes, we're so excited to reconnect with you guys. It's, it's been a long time, like super juice since I've seen you. <laughs> yeah, it's been a I'm while. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But the so years are like dog years in the pet industry, I think. <laughs> Right. Yeah, like one year's <laughs> equivalent to seven. So that's true. <laughs> yeah. I'm, Thank you I'm for excited doing to get to talk to you guys and not have to wait for Super Zoo. And 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 our listeners, they don't know what a treat that they are in for um getting to listen to your expertise because there's a lot of information on, you know, the interwebs and not well, you know, there's always two sides to a story and not everybody agrees. And so I'm hoping that today we can, you know, really get your expert um, in opinion and input and clear up some questions that I bet our listeners have. We're yeah. happy to be here. Thanks for having us. Thank Absolutely. you. So for would here. you, um, would you two mind just quickly, you know, introducing yourself and tell us a little bit about um, what cocoa therapy is and, and why? You create, or you know, why why it's out here? Why you're providing this product? Um, and and it's like a really like all of the different certifications and everything you have for the product. It's 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 pretty incredible. Sure. Okay. Well, we um we actually came from a family. Well, we grew, grew up culturally with uh, coconut oil in our lives, in our diet, and just coconut products in general. So we've always known the health benefits. My grandma used to use it on us when we were little kids and our pets. She would, it was her first aid kit in a jar. So she, mm -hmm. we would put it topically on everything, head lice, scratches, you name it. This went for our dogs too with fleas and ticks and it was part of her diet. So we ate it constantly. If we had any issues health wise, she gave it to us internally and same with our animals. So we did grow up with that. Um, We've been in the coconut oil industry for um, three generations. This is a woman-owned wow. um, business, family-owned business. Um, and But cocoa therapy actually is only nine or 10 years old, even though we've been in the coconut oil industry all our lives. We started it because of our dog, Violet, who had really bad allergies. Go on. Yeah, yeah, she was my Yorkie. And she was not even a year old when she started itching and scratching. And I knew it was not normal because she would yeah. tear at her skin. And then she yeah. smelled kind of yeasty. So we went, I took her to a veterinarian and they, a conventional vet and they gave her prednisone 
course, mm -hmm. and that tempered every, all her immune system down. So that helped her. But unfortunately, every time we tried to wean her off the pred, the itchy and scratching would come back. So I was heartbroken because her hair was a mess. She was supposed to be my beautiful long-haired Yorkie. And I thought, this dog is a year old and she can't be on prednisone the rest of her life. So I was literally terrified yeah. of wh how we would take care of this. And then the stars aligned because we met a very well-known, at that time she was not famous yet, integrative veterinarian, Karen Becker, who used <laughs> to practice in Bourbonnet, Illinois, a small town. So we drove two hours just to see her to see what's mm -hmm. going on. And we learned a wealth of information from diet, cleaning up her food and everything. And one thing she said was her immune system is overactive. Let's try and temper it down. And on her shelf, she had coconut oil. So this was kind of a shock. We're like, look at this. She's got virgin coconut oil in her clinic. And it's something we grew up with, but we've never seen it talked about in the United States when we moved here. So she said, oh, yes, coconut oil is so good. It helps balance the immune system. And she knew about the medium chain fatty acid. So this really blew our minds. That the connection was so amazing. Like, wow, grandma was right. You know, you, you take these things for granted when yeah. you're growing up. And then we said, is that it? That's it? So we have coconut oil at home. So we started giving it to Violet, cleaned up her diet and all that. And over time, I would say about a three-month period, we were able to wean her off the prednisone. And I was just holding my breath thinking, surely it's going to come back. It's going to come back. And it didn't. It didn't yeah. come back. So at that point, I was so, I, I was so happy. And I couldn't tell enough people about it because we have friends that have itching and scratching. We hear it all the time on, the, on, on Facebook, dogs with yeast infections. So I would always tell them, try giving them coconut oil. And we always brought some for ourselves. Yeah, but what happened was, because we used our own coconut oil, we did run out because we go to the Philippines every year, but we they ran out. Yeah. We take turns. We ran out. So what we did was we ran to the grocery store and we bought coconut oil. And for some reason, after using that for several weeks, we felt like, it wasn't helping. There was a difference. There was a, yeah. definitely a difference. But back then, my sister and I weren't so into the science of it and, and, and mm -hmm. the different ways you could make coconut oil as a family business. We were on to our other jobs and, and working for, with our dog clothing line. So um, when we know there's a difference, we actually um, called back into the Philippines to find out what the difference what the differences were and is there a difference and can they send more oil and can, yeah can you send us more oil because the one we're using doesn't work well we found so that was the journey of opening our eyes and learning how we actually made our coconut oil how it was different and how the different levels of media chain fatty acids occurred in different types of oils depending on how it's processed and that yep. just opened our eyes to the point where even um dr becker started carrying our oil because she nice. Yeah, she thought it was such a huge difference. And she told us, this is just amazing what you guys have. And that's kind of how Cocoa Therapy was born. So mm, wow. the, the Cocoa Therapy brand. So that's how we got started. Yeah, Nice. That's a neat origin story. So when you talked about, you know, you, you changed the food and you started adding the coconut oil and, you know, you ended up going back to your grandmother in the Philippines and asking about the difference. Because that's a question that we get often, very often, probably probably every time we talk about coconut oil in the store, it's like, well, what is the difference in what you carry versus what I can go buy at the local grocery store? And, you know, in in our work, all of us, we're very, very concerned with sourcing. We're very concerned with manufacturing processes. You know, that's not I mean, that's for any product that we're recommending. So could you talk about your sourcing and, and manufacturing and what things our listeners should be listening for and looking for when they are wanting to incorporate coconut oil? Right. So we source the coconut oil um, directly from our farms in the Philippines. And if you notice, our oil is not only certified organic, it's non-GMO verified. It's very strict. Yes. They, we trace our coconuts directly to the farm, to the lot, to the tree where it comes from. So we're very nice. picky. Um, so our, our coconuts are grown in volcanic regions, not like sandy beaches. So soil makes a huge yeah. difference. 
temperature mm-hmm. makes a huge difference. And I think people know this in terms like for apples, for example, apples grown in Washington state are very different from other places. Yes. So and it also depends on how long they've been on the tree, when they're picked, if it's, is it ripe, is it picked too early? So it makes that difference. So for our coconuts, we pick their tree ripened for a year. So they're not wow. picked before then. And mm-hmm. once they are picked, we open and process them with uh, less than 24 hours when you do that. Whereas other farms, to save money, they can scrape the coconut inside and they dry it. They actually dry it. And when they're ready mm-hmm. to make oil, they reconstitute it with water. Mm-hmm. And then that's so yours has press. moisture in it naturally. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Just, it's, well, it, it's, it's called for, wet milled. So what happens is you milled. grate the coconut, right? So you have coconut that's wet. Mm-hmm. We don't dehydrate it at all because we don't want to rehydrate it with water because that kind of dilutes the coconut. Um, mm-hmm. So wet milled, so the coconut is wet when we actually press it. So when you press it, when you press a coconut, what comes out is milk, milk. coconut milk. Oh. Not the water. When you open a coconut oh. and you pour that liquid out, that's coconut water. So you just drink that up. You, yeah, you can drink that. But the coconut milk, you can drink that too. But um, you press, press that. And then what happens is a lot of people will um, boil it to, re- to separate, separate the oil from the milk. Yeah. But mm-hmm. that means it's heated. So we yeah. don't do that. So, so we let it naturally separate in a cold room. And then we get the oil and you off, skim it off, and then the you top. skim it off the top. That's that's how we process it. That's why the oil that we make is. Uh, I mean, you don't get as much as as you would if you boiled it. Then the difference too is they expel or press their dried coconut meat. Their coconut meat that's dried and rehydrated, they use expeller pressing, so that generates heat as well about 250 degrees so that's so additional technically heat. it's not really cold it's pressed. not cold pressed technically but so that's why we mean. see cold pressed on your bottles it really yes, it pressed. is it yeah. is and th- so that's a difference but unfortunately on um, the term cold pressed isn't regulated by the USDA here in the US or any place so Anyone can really put cold press on the label, but that is very deceiving. Um, another uh, term that's not regulated is virgin, the term virgin. So mm-hmm. our coconut oil is virgin, meaning it's unrefined. That's the definition of virgin coconut oil. That means we don't use bleach or hexanes or any chemicals or to solvents. Or so- solvents to remove the oil, which is a, a lot of companies do. They're mm-hmm. partially refined because you get more oil that way. But right. what people don't know is For partially refined oils, you can still put the term virgin on the bottle because that's not regulated either. And in fact, some companies go even further and put extra virgin on their coconut oil, which means absolutely nothing. And the the, the, the term extra virgin in the olive oil industry means something. That means first press because you can press olives multiple times. So the first press means virgin in olive oil, but in coconuts, it means nothing. So that's, again, another marketing ploy when they say extra. Yeah, which is really, really deceiving. So Mm -hmm. all those differences in manufacturing and that the way we um, harvest it and and the way it's not um, dry, that makes a huge difference in the in the levels of um, fatty acids that you get in coconut oil. So basically, there's really three types of coconut oil. There's um. Cosmetic grade coconut oil, which is highly refined. So a lot of this, they use um, refined oil. They use it in shampoos and conditioners, lotion, lotion. lotion. yeah, mm-hmm. and soap. Then you have um, what we consider a food grade coconut oil, which um, can be partially refined. It doesn't have to be 100% refined, but it is partially refined. It, they don't, they're not concerned about the levels of lauric, caprylic, and capric acid. So these are the oils that you can use to cook with. A lot of this cooking oil sometimes barely has any smell of coconut. So the levels mm-hmm. of lauric acid, the fat, medium chain fatty acids are a lot lower in the cooking grade oils that you would find in a grocery, a grocery store. store. That's probably what your um, customers are asking about. Now, yep. um, for our oil, the way we make it, um, it's the way it's made, it has higher levels of lauric acid, caprylic and capric acid, which is the medium chain acids that we want. And that's why it's so highly effective. In fact, um, in our bottles, I wish we had one here, and the front, in the front label, it says high lauric acid on it. And um, you can't 
necessarily put that on a label with the FDA unless you test for, you test for it and it's written on the label, the percentages of the Lorca, Prolic, and Capric Acid. So you could actually pick up our bottle of coconut oil and point those, those things in the label out and tell them to go to the grocery store and look for the levels of fatty acids, which they won't find because mm. they, they don't need to, they don't need it. to test for it. So um, that that's is such good information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That's awesome. And yeah. it's these fatty acids that are so beneficial. Yeah. Because, right. Is that, so I, I was not too long ago talking to someone about saturated fats and how, you know, here in the U.S., Around the 70s, we like really the government started demonizing the saturated fats and the food industry started. De and and just as like one. One side effect of that has been just since then, we've seen such a huge increase in Alzheimer's specifically in cognitive disorders in humans when we have reduced significantly the saturated fats that we have in our diets and so that also affects our pets obviously but um i think that's kind of a good starting point to to talk about the benefits of these these fatty acids in the coconut oil both internally and, and externally <laughs> yeah yeah um you're you're right coconut oil is a saturated fat and unfortunately everybody if you you Google fats, everybody's afraid of saturated fats. It's being, we've been brainwashed thinking that saturated fats are bad for you. I've heard many people say that, and that's why I stay away from coconut oil. What they don't realize is there are different kinds of saturated fats. There's the long chain fats and the medium chain fats, which everybody says. And all it is, is all fats are uh, carbon atoms, and it, they, they classify them by their lengths based on the number of carbon atoms they have. So mm -hmm. medium chain fats is anywhere from um, six to 12 and long chain fats would be 18 up to 22 or 24. So it makes a difference because it, they're metabolized very different. Well, the, the long chain fats are the saturated fats that doctors are, that warn you about butter, um, meat, you know, beef, animal fat and butter is a long chain saturated fat, but coconut oil is a medium chain saturated yeah, fat. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's the same fats found in mother's milk. So, mm -hmm. If you know why babies and, you know, uh, puppies and kittens drink mother's milk, it's because they're building a healthier immune system and they're getting that from the medium chain fats found in mother's milk. So that's why it's also very beneficial. Um, so saturated fats are, are, are one of the easiest to metabolize. Uh, they're very low stress on the body to break down. Um, they're converted to energy ketones very easily, which is one of the cleanest, simplest form of fuel for the body. It's yeah. easier to convert, say, a medium chain fat to cellular energy than, say, carbohydrates, which is why it's so healthy for animals with cognitive disorders because it feeds cellular brain cells. We all know about ketones going to the brain or um, animals with diabetes. When they have a hard time, they have insulin issues because they can't convert um, carbs to sh sugar and they can't break down the sugar into energy. This yeah. is why coconut oil is so healthy and so helpful for so many different types of animals and different reasons. Yeah. And it's healthy for animals with pancreatitis because coconut oil being a medium chain fat, you don't need um, dietary, you don't need lipase or bile acids, any of those digestive enzymes to digest coconut oil. Um, there's no chylomicron activity where it transports the fat into your bloodstream and it gets into your arteries. None of that happens. What happens is as soon as you consume coconut oil, it, the, um, the medium chain fats gets uh, transported directly to your liver through a portal vein. And in your liver, it gets metabolized and converted to ketones. And that's right. what actually fuels the cells in your body. So it totally bypasses all the, the need for pancreatic enzymes or bile acids, which is why animals with pancreatitis can actually have um, coconut oil. Nice. Yeah. I have yeah. A question related to that. That was one of the biggest questions I had coming into today's session, because again, going to the consumers and the pet parents that we all three talk to um, repeatedly, we get feedback from them 
from their veterinarians that they cannot, they have to have a low fat diet and they have zero tolerance for fat period. And, Mm -hmm. you know, the challenge as we know in, in the industry is that the lack of nutrition that a traditional veterinarian, you know, receives when they are a student. So unless they are doing this on their own, it's, um, it's just inadequate. So (laughs) when talking to, (laughs) sadly, it is true. Um, and when talking to their veterinarian, um, what are some recommendations from, you guys, you know, with your science background, you know, not that it is our job to convince our veterinarian to give us the approval and the thumbs up, you know, to add something to our pet's diet, because that is our job. That's our right. It's our responsibility to make the best decisions for our pets. And, um, you know, we, again, all, all of us here on this, you know, podcast, are proponents for um, health and nutrition through v- via nutrition. So it, it's a challenge. And what would you tell our listeners as far as talking to their, or, or, you know, not even maybe not talking to their vet. Maybe it's just that they want to make that best decision. Right. You know, we have dogs who have seizures. We have dogs who have diabetes, kidney disease. And they all come in and they want below 10% fat. Yeah. Well, first of all, I would tell them that not all fats are the same. And number one, number two, um, a lot of veterinarians don't know what coconut oil is. You know, what's really interesting is I was in a conventional veterinarian's office one time and he pulled out the Merck medical veterinary manual. <laughs> To yes. show me something, because he was a very good vet in the sense that he would educate me and show me drawings, et cetera, right? Mm-hmm. Then I remembered looking through the manual and flipping to the pancreatitis section. And then the, this veterinary manual, it explained and it said medium chain triglycerides are that fine. They are fine to give with animals, wow. but it did not say coconut oil. Wow. So in this manual, it said medium chain triglycerides. But, and then I, I chuckled to myself knowing that what that was. So a lot of these conventional veterinarians, they don't know what that is. They mm-hmm. think it's a different type of fancy yeah. triglyceride. They don't know that's coconut oil. So, so they might give some sort of like um, pharmaceutical type supplement that says on the label, medium, medium chain triglycerides, triglycerides, but they don't know exactly where it came from. I actually yeah. had, yeah. so we've had animals our whole life. She had a cat with idiopathic pancreatitis. I mean, I've had um, a, a dog, a Yorkie with PLE, protein losing enteropathy. Both conditions, you need very low fat. And so we had vets, you know, we go to a vet specialty clinic with internal medicine. Mm-hmm. Vets are very knowledgeable, but they're also mm-hmm. conventional. So they said, you have to be very low in fat, guard against fat, blah, blah, blah. So um, there, one of the vets said, well, here's a very special, of course, um, oil that you can buy from me and it has lots of medium chain triglycerides in it. So I said, okay, great. I'll buy it. You know, I look at it. It's a, it's a special kind of fish oil. So fish oil is not a medium chain fat, but in her brain, she thought it was, and it was just a very expensive, you know, prescription fish oil, fish oil yeah. that I got. And then, I mean, it was okay. But, um, so it just showed me that they did not understand what a medium chain fat was. So for mm-hmm. all our animals that had these issues, but pancreatitis that your cat had and my family issues, we, yeah. I, we continued to give coconut oil and they thrived on it. So, mm-hmm. you know, it came to a point where um, we don't even tell them <laughs> we're giving them coconut oil because they'll be like, well, what? You're yeah. going to kill your dog? But, you know, quite frankly, I have. But yeah, you first, especially when you go back and they say, you're, oh, you, your, your cat looks fantastic. Doing well. Continue doing what you're doing. Well, you know what? Guess yeah. what? I've been yeah. giving them, you know, coconut oil. And they're like, what? Yeah. What? You know? But by then, they're, they're willing to listen. And if you tell them that they are medium chain triglycerides, as it says under a manual, then I think they're a little bit more open to it. But I think it's just a really a lack of education on their part. Like you said, they don't get a lot of nutrition. Mm-hmm. But my mm-hmm. main thing for these people that's, that say their vet recommends a super low fat diet, 
fat is an extremely functional macronutrient. You cannot yeah. live without fat. I don't care no. what kind of disease you have. You will die mm -hmm. if you live on a super low zero fat diet, which first of all, is virtually impossible to do. But secondly, yep. your body will not, you won't survive. You just won't thrive because you need fats. Our brain is like, yeah, you need your fats brain. to absorb yeah. nutrients, fat soluble nutrients, first of all, you know, mm -hmm. for one thing. Mm -hmm. And then the, you will just stress the body out metabolically because they're not getting the right type of protection, um, the simplest form of energy. You, you, fat is a necessary m macronutrient. So, right. And, and fat is converted to cholesterol. So good cholesterol, animals good. are very, very high in good cholesterol, HDL. HDL. So for all of us, you know, everybody's like, eat a low cholesterol diet, cut out fat, blah, blah, blah. We need cholesterol. Our, our bodies convert cholesterol. fat to good cholesterol. And we need that for, um, for just the process. Well, for our, all the hormones yes. in our bodies. And are um, produced coconut oil is actually converts to good cholesterol. That's the and other thing about, HDL. about, yeah. Yes. Then the other thing too about animals that people don't realize, animals can actually tolerate so much more fat than humans can. So um, the, the diet that they eat with a high, the amount of fat they tolerate, if humans ate the kind of saturated fat from meat or beef that animals can consume, we might get effects of, of um, you know, it might affect our, our, blood heart. To our, sludge. our blood would turn to sludge, <laughs> basically, with, with the amount of fat that animals can, can handle, can handle. And, sh and should be able to handle. Yeah. Um, there's this wildlife biologist, Dr. Mark Norris. I don't know if you've heard of them, of him. He um, coined the terms biologically appropriate species species appropriate food he was the one who coined that term because what he did he was a wildlife biologist so he had the study where he studied both domesticated dogs and wild dogs um he had um left um food fat foods that were fat carbs and protein and let the animals forage on their own and just to see what they would eat and he noticed both in the domesticated and the wild dogs they would first gorge on fat that was wow. the first thing they did. They gorged on fat. And then after getting their fill of their fat, then they would gorge on meat, protein, second, and then carbs last. So that feeds their brain and just feeds their system. And he was, that's the way fats are supposedly, I mean, animals are supposed to eat. So mm -hmm. that's the other thing I would tell the customer. So this fear of fat is really, I think it's... Um, well, yeah. They have to give the right fats, of course. Don't go frying bacon and, you know, yeah. well, <laughs> that's frying the other turkey. thing, too. Cooked fats is highly yeah, oxidized. No, no, yeah. And oxidized. Oxidized, yeah. oxidized fats are, are toxic, so we don't recommend giving cooked fat. Yeah, and I think it's also important to to know, like, so we can, we are, we're only getting calories from three places, protein, fat, and carbs, mm -hmm. right? And so yeah. if we're telling people that they have to remove fat or as much fat as possible from the diet, we're looking at, I mean, fat is is close to a two to one ratio of calories to protein. So it takes a lot more protein mm -hmm. to make up the caloric difference. So a lot of these diets are relying really heavily on cheap carbohydrate fillers. Mm -hmm. And that is just as difficult for an, a dog or a cat's pancreas to digest. I mean, they are still having to produce tons of granted different, but still digestive enzymes to break down the attempt to break down those carbohydrates. And so it's it, it really isn't i mean none of it's ideal and we probably got there we probably got to pancreatitis because of the high carbohydrate yeah, content yeah. in the food coupled with oxidized fats that the body yep. is trying to break down over yep. an extended period of time and that's mm -hmm. really where i'm on my soapbox now <laughs> no, but i love it yeah. I keep talking that's true, that's true. Yeah. um but i, I want you true. guys pam yeah, I know. I want you guys to get to get your questions in. Um, did you have any more, Janet? Or Pam? Um, I I did because you, and you touched on it just then when you're talking about um, cooked fats. So you have your cold pressed virgin coconut oil, which is a solid, and then you have your MCT oil, and 
as I understand it, and correct me if I'm wrong, the MCT oil is the one that I'm okay. I, I can use that at high heat. So, and I may be doing it wrong, but when I cook my eggs in the morning, I use MCT oil. Um, but because you were suggesting to our listeners that cooked fats, they oxidize, that's not in the pet's best interest. So how do pet parents use coconut oil how do they use your product well first for coconut oil both our virgin coconut oil and mct oil they're very stable coconut oil tends not to oxidize as easily as the long chain fats that being because they're saturated they're fully loaded with hydrogen atoms it doesn't break down easily in high heat so Mm. cooking with coconut oil mct oil are the best oils you can cook with in fact, that's the only oils they mainly cook with in the Philippines, and you have a very low incident of heart diseases and obesity in the Philippines. Now, nice. the oxidized oils that we talk about that's very toxic would be your like um, your vegetable oils, canola oils, the mm-hmm. unsaturated fats. Those are all mono and poly unsaturated fats. Those break down very easily in high heat, which is why when you get olive oil or fish oil or something, it's in a dark bottle keep it in the refrigerator so it doesn't mm. oxidize. Those oils oxidize so quickly, since you open the bottle, they start to oxidize already because of the air. So when you cook with unsaturated fats, they tend to oxidize. And that's what we mean when we say that it, it causes inflammation and uh, just a, a toxic overload. Whereas coconut oil is fine to cook with. I will cook with both our virgin coconut oil and the MC, MCT oil. And it just depends if you want the taste of coconut or not. Because sometimes mm-hmm. if you don't want too much of a strong taste, you can cook with the MCT oil. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And, and the main difference is, yeah, the main differences well, between the two oils is just the amount of um, medium chain fats there are in each of the oil. It differs mm-hmm. there. And you're in the solid versus the liquid. Correct. You mean? Correct. Yeah, the, the virgin meat. coconut oil is solid. In the Philippines, though, virgin coconut oil is liquid because of the temperatures. So yeah, oh. I would imagine in Texas or Florida, if your temperature is what seventy six degrees and higher, you could be it could be liquid Unless on your table. air conditioned room. Yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah. does. And it's fine. If if it gets if the temperature here in the store gets seventy eight degrees, everything is liquid. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's the way they see it there in the Philippines. Yeah. They hardly see a solid white coconut oil over there because it's always warm, and there's nothing wrong with it being liquid either. What, yeah. I mean, every medium chain fat solidifies and melts. They have different solidifying and melting points. So lauric acid, because virgin coconut oil has the highest amount of lauric acid, it actually stays solid longer. Whereas with the MCT oil, it has lesser, the smaller amount of lauric acid, so it stays liquid and, mm. and um, longer. It's fascinating. So I, I just, to, this will probably run into Pam's question, at least the one I know she has. Um, one of the things, and I just, it's so funny that I want to repeat the story because I think when we have stories, especially if they're funny, then things stick in people's brains a little bit easier. Um, I was listening to a Mel Robbins podcast not too long ago, and she was talking about, she went on a hike with some friends and they gave her MCT oil at the beginning of the hike for fuel. And she had never taken MCT oil before. And she took the same dose as everybody else who had been taking it forever and ever and ever. And she said it was the most embarrassing thing ever in the world because she definitely could not contain herself any longer. So um, like starting small and easing up to it. I know I put MCT oil in my hot tea, so I'm glad to hear that it's it's heat resist. It's, it's fairly heat resistant because that's how I use it. But um I think that kind of brings up the point of how to introduce MCT and coconut oils. Was that your, can you, do you want to ask your question, Pam, so I don't ask it for you? (laughs) No, it's fine. I was just going to ask your opinion for our listeners is how would you recommend introducing it to both cats and dogs? And what is there a better way than others to, for them to be taking it? What's your opinion? Well, definitely start slow. So for the virgin coconut oil, which is a mix of all the different fatty acids, we will say one teaspoon per 10 pound. But by all means, you can do half a teaspoon per 10 pound. Or a fourth of a teaspoon. teaspoon. So you start less. (laughs) And with the MCT oil, we will say one half teaspoon per 10 pounds versus Mm -hmm. the one teaspoon per 10 pounds. And um, every animal is different. I had two Yorkies, and they both 
were very, they needed different doses. They weighed exactly the same. It's just that one mm. dog, if I gave her a little bit more, her coat would start to get a little oilier. Whereas the mm. other one looked gorgeous the more oil I gave her. So very yeah. shiny. So every dog is just different though, for some yes. reason, the way they do that. So we say start small. It's not a drug. It's a food. And then give it to maximum oral tolerance. So when you see that they're starting to look great, they don't smell so corn chippy and weird, you know, whatever, and their coats are shiny, <laughs> stop there. You don't have to keep going to the one teaspoon if your dog's doing great at and half a teaspoon. Yeah. So right, that's it's advice. just the way it is for everybody. That's, I have a story yes. about Eli, who is my Chawini, and he Aww. has a very short double coat, and um, he's the apple of his daddy's eye, and he <laughs> gets flaky on his little bum. And the first time that happened, I thought, okay, well, what causes flaky skin? And I examined what we were feeding at the time. And at the time, we were partial kibble feeders. We did um, partial gently cooked um, with uh, with uh, kibble, dry food. And I knew about coconut oil from you ladies at Super Zoo. And I started to add it to his food and they love to eat it off the spoon. Oh my gosh, all my dogs love coconut oil. And it was a matter of days and his, I, I fed it until the flakes were gone. And his coat did exactly what you said about your babies. It turned so silky and shiny and he has a beautiful black coat. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But he'll do that now and again. And when he does that, it tells me something is off. So to our listeners, you know, if you, if you're you know, tuning in, um, rewind, if, if you're just now tuning in, if you've got the, like you said, the Frito feet, the Frito smell, the ears, um, or flaky skin or a dull coat, it could be a lack of omegas. And the last thing I want to mention is when we feed a kibble diet, I have learned this through, you know, just having the store and, and learning from the Dr. Beckers of the world, the Dr. Morgans of the world, um, kibble at high heat, you know, you void the um, much of the omegas that is in the initial recipe. So it may have sufficient omegas going in, but once we apply heat, we degrade nutrients as we all know. Um, and that's why we have the vitamin packs that are added to so many of the dry foods on the market and, and even canned foods, um, even some raw foods. But, you know, going back to skin and coat, I have seen with my own eyes numerous times how coconut oil um, can make for a beautiful, healthy, non-yeasty coat. <laughs> well, in even my cats who are not typically thought of as yeasty animals, my cats love licking the coconut oil off of my hands too. Do you have any <laughs> other questions specific to cats, Pam? No, that was really it. I just wanted people to understand how they can introduce it and, you know, I just yeah. remember a story that Rodney Habib shared when he was getting his dog introduced to coconut oil and he gave her too much and he had what's called disaster pants. <laughs> we, we don't want to have like major, you know, accidents all over your, your floor and your sofas and everything. So start small, please. Yeah. <laughs> Very small. And, and you ladies have the little coconut chips that I think yeah. you kind of, uh, maybe market a little bit more towards cats as well too is that uh, um cats can do very they do very well with the virgin coconut oil i know my cats i have one cat that just gets it's really weird he, his ears get really funky for absolutely no reason so when i start upping his coconut oil it starts to clear out and that's just it's not a yeasty ear it's just yep. he just gets dirty ears cats. than my other yeah, yeah than my other female cat so when i you know, so, so when I start to see that more, probably in the summer and the warmer months, I'll start upping his coconut oil and then it actually clears up better. So wow. cats can do very well with both coconut oil and MCT oil, but the coconut chips is great for anyone who's afraid of coconut oil, first of all, and fiber, because yes. we all need fiber for laxity and just digestive health and fiber converts to um, short chain fatty acids. It's a substrate that our beneficial gut bacteria feeds on. So fiber is wonderful 
coconut oil, nice. uh, coconut chips is great because it's a soluble and insoluble fiber. It's a blend. It's not just one or the other. With pumpkin, it's just soluble made primarily. Coconut chips is a blend of both. And so they react differently. One will ferment better and soluble fiber ferments better. So it feeds, acts as a substrate for the gut bacteria. That's mm -hmm. why it's so healthy for dogs with um, GI issues, um, IBD, colitis, um, just constipation, yeah. or even chronic diarrhea. So we love the coconut chip, the hairballs for cats too. Mm -hmm. We have a hairball product. So we love what it about because our glands? coconut chips is different. Yeah. Oh, and anal it, glands. Yeah. Oh, anal glands. Yeah. Exactly. Give yeah. more when you start to see your dog kind of scooting. Yeah. And our coconut chips is different in that it contains um, some coconut oil in it. It's not fully right. fatted. So it's very different cool. from the coconut, um, desiccated coconut you get in the baking aisle. That's yeah. very different. Yeah. Okay. And no sugar. I, and I know. Yeah. <laughs> and I know you have some collaborations as well. Um, you have a collaboration for some CBD treats with CBD Dog Health um, that are out there. And I know you've made some cocoa um, toys for the two crazy cat ladies. So there's there's a lot going on that you guys um, have in your big product line and, and everything you're doing. Can you... Um, is there anything else, any like parting words that you would like to tell our listeners about coconut oil specifically or anything you guys have going on and then where people can find you? Okay, well, for our, our parting words is I think people who are afraid of it or have heard negative things about it, and there's a lot of misinformation and um, misconceptions about coconut oil, I, I just tell them to do their research and, and, and find out where the studies are coming from. On our website, there is actually, um, you can download a study and a book that has um, all the scientific studies by categorized by category. So for yeah. brain health, for heart health, for digestive health. Um, and these are studies, so we don't insert any of our words in it. These are studies they can actually read themselves. We do summarize the studies in case they just want to yeah. summarize. It's a 60-page book. Yeah. And, and it's a wow. free download. Yeah. They can wow. download that. They can learn about it. And the other thing I tell them too is coconut oil has been around for years, years. hundreds, <laughs> thousands of years. Yes. So for people to be afraid that it's going to cause leaky gut or cause inflammation or, or everybody's going to die of a heart attack. I mean, there yeah. are populations in the world that have given it to themselves and their animals for years. So um, mm -hmm. It was just, just a little bit of common sense and a lot of science reading it. I, I, I think they it, yeah, it, do your research. Yeah. And it, it the way the benefits of coconut oil is just so incredible that it could really, I feel like it's such a necessity to have in your home for yourself and your animal. And it's so versatile too. It, it can be applied topically or taken internally. So mm -hmm. it's just like my grandma said, First aid kit in a jar. <laughs> we used to think she was nuts, but <laughs> and and you don't have to be sick or have a, some condition to take coconut oil. I will take it every day before I go to the gym. I take a tablespoon of our MCT oil. We're very used to fast, so I can take a lot. Plus, just remember what? MCT oil. They're made very differently too. There's MCT oils out there. If you notice, has no smell, no taste. Most MCT oils out there, and they don't have lauric acid. If that's the case, they're highly refined. And I see that because they take the smell and the taste out. So highly mm -hmm. refined MCT oils are very difficult to digest because they do use certain solvents to break it down. Our MCT oil has a slight smell and taste of coconut. So I can take a lot of it. And we get a lot of people who actually take a lot of our MCT oil. Of course, build up to it like anything mm -hmm. else. But um, it's so, yeah, don't be afraid of it and use it when you're healthy. Don't wait to become sick to start mm -hmm. using coconut oil. That's what I tell people because they'll say, well, my dog doesn't have pancreatitis, so I don't have to give it coconut oil. Well, don't wait till for it to get pancreatitis to give it yeah. coconut oil. You know what I mean? Because it's like, yeah. it's, it's one of the healthiest, most nourishing fats you can mm -hmm. give that actually takes care of your immune system. It takes care of your cellular health. It takes care of your brain. Um, so that's what I always tell people. And y'all's so, is human grade. So you can- Oh, yes. Yeah. In, yeah. ingest it eat it use it topically just along with your pets yes mm -hmm. exactly you can share it with your animals <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. That's Love fabulous. It. Those are those are my favorite products, the ones that I can use and my cats and my dogs can all use. Those are yeah. my favorites. 
<laughs> and you can eat our treats too. All our treats the are vegan. Grade. Vegan treats. The vegan treats are human grade. You can eat them as and share them with your dogs too. All our treats are certified organic, made with <laughs> coconut oil. We'll not use any types of fats, other fats in it. So, yeah. Awesome. And, and it's cocotherapy.com. And is it just cocotherapy on all the socials as well? Yes. Perfect. Yep. That that book, I'm going to put I'm going to make sure to put all the links in the show notes um because that that ebook will be I think very beneficial for a lot of people even if you just read the the summaries, very very beneficial. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I'm so thrilled to have you here today and I can't wait to see you guys at Super Zoo. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Yay. Okay, now we've got three reasons to be excited to go to Super Zoo. You three. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Thank you very, very much. I hope you guys have a fabulous rest of your week. Thank you guys for listening. Um, and please do go check out Coco Therapy. It is my favorite coconut oil, the only one I have listed on my website, the only one I recommend. And um, very, there are so many wonderful uses of it. I know I have a lot of blogs um, on my site about using it as well. But please check out cocotherapy.com because they have like they're the hub of information for coconut oil. So yeah. until next time, please give your pets some extra love from all of us, and we'll talk to you soon. Love you guys. Love Thank you. you. Bye.